Hello and welcome. Today we're going to do a short review of vector mathematics and really we're going to focus on just a few aspects of vector mathematics. So let's just write down a few things. We have a vector. Let's say it's just a list of numbers. Oops. A2. So in this case we'll just talk about a two-dimensional vector. And we'll write down another vector here as well, b1 and b2. All right, so we're talking about two dimensions here, but obviously we can generalize to higher dimensions uh, very simply. So let's just draw one out. Okay, that would be a, and it always emanates from the zero, the, the origin line. And then there'll be a b here as well. Okay, so there's two vectors. And so one of the, one of the important tools we want is a tool to compare Um, two vectors. So uh, one such tool is the dot product. And what it really does is it, uh, it, it, it gives information about the angle between the two vectors. So it gives information about theta. So let's write down the symbol for it. It's just A with the solid dot B. And for 2D, of course, it's just going to be um, it's just going to be A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2. So it's the product of the components summed. Um, and you know, in general, if you want to talk about higher dimensions, it just you, you'd be AI times BI i equals 1 to n, the sum over all of the dimensions. All right, and for both of these cases, um, for, any, for two dimensions or higher dimensions or whatever, uh, this has a really nice relationship between the angle and the dot product number. So again, this just spits out some real number, and the real number has information about the, the relationship between a and b. And that relationship is as follows. It's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine theta. Okay, all right, so let's recall again with the magnitude how to define that. It is actually simply going to be the square root of a dotted with itself. So again, the dot product gives you information not only about the magnitudes of the vectors, but also the angles between. And so that's a really nice, uh, 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 a really nice tool we use to, to, to compare two vectors. So, um, uh, so theta in this case is gonna vary between pi and all the way down to zero. So of course, uh, if you have a vector a and then another vector b that's parallel, theta will be zero, right? But if you have vectors that are pointing, they're still, still parallel, but now pointing in completely opposite directions, theta will be uh, pi, or uh, uh, 180 degrees. Okay, all right, so, um, so, so that's the idea, is that this dot product can tell you how much of one vector is going in the direction of another vector. All right, so it tells you kind of motion with respect to uh, some, um, some uh, direction of interest. Okay, so uh, this can be formalized a little bit more. So I'm going to write down another thing. So let's say I want to ask, you know, so the question then is how much of, uh, of A is uh, pointing in the direction of B? So that has a really uh, nice, and we actually have a symbol for that. It's called the component of A in the direction of B, which we write as a subscript. And that is going to be A dot B divided by the magnitude of B. Okay, and that gives you that. So let's just do a quick example here. Let's say A is 1, 1, and then B is going to be a 1, 0. Okay, we can draw those out. There's 1, 1. And there is uh, 1, 0. Okay, so that's A. And this is B. All right, and then what's the angle between? We already know that this should be a 45 degree angle, or it should be pi over 4. All right, but let's just see if we can get an, an idea of the component. So again, we'll do the comp computation. It's just going to be um, 1, 1 dotted with 1, 0, which is going to be uh, and then we're going to divide by the magnitude of b, which is just going to be 1, 1. And so uh, 
So uh, if we dot these together, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 0 uh, plus 0, so the answer is 1. The component of A that's in the direction of B is 1. All right, we can see that's true. We see that B is the direction along the x-axis, and we see that A, the component of A that is along the direction of the x-axis is just 1. All right, so that's a really nice way of doing it. That's a very simple example. All right, so now let's relate it to the angle again. Um, so 1 is the... Um, is the um, is the is the dot product? Uh, sorry, a dot b. Okay, we know that's equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine theta. Well, okay, what's the magnitude of a? Well, magnitude of a you can find out pretty straightforwardly. It's square root of two. The magnitude of b is one times cosine theta. We can rewrite this as cosine theta is equal to 1 over root 2, or rather what we call square root of 2 over 2. So if you look up in your, uh, in your tables of trigonometry, of course, you find out that the only angle that produces that is going to be, uh, at least on, the only angle um, that's going to produce that uh, within 0 to uh, pi is, is going to be pi over 4. Okay, so, and that's equal to theta. All right, and so that gives us a nice relationship between angle and um, and uh, and uh, um, and uh, um, a nice relationship between angle and um, uh, um, magnitude of vectors. That's the dot product. All right, so why is this useful? Why are we re rehashing the the the? So you know, why is the dot product going to be a per? Uh, important for PDEs. So why is it going to be important for that? Uh, and, the, and the idea again is we want to talk about motion. If I want to talk about the motion of maybe a particle going in space in a particular direction, and I want to know about how, how much of it is going into a certain region, well I might have uh, a, a, a vector field of motion through space. And I want to talk about maybe a surface, maybe a region of space, we'll call that R, and I want to know how much is going through into that region R, how much, how much mass might be transported. And so I need to know basically how much of, of the flow of this, of this quantity is moving into a region R. So the question then is, and it turns out we're going to use the dot product to compute flux. to compute the flux of quantity, of some quantity, into or you know through or through um, a, a a boundary. Alright, and to do that we need the dot product. And the dot product again is that if we have some surface, like here this is R, and then we have some flow, and that'll be in my vector A, and R has a surface normal, which we'll call N, and uh, the amount of A that's going through the surface R is going to be related to the dot product of A times the surface normal, and so that will be a very useful quantity uh, uh, for our studying of flux, which is of course essential for what we call uh, transport. Okay, so in the next video, we'll talk more about flux, so thank you very much.